I've been making some ATCs in this, I just call this sort of the Robin Marie Smith um, style because, you know, she does these bright colors with these you know, very simple but impressive doodly shapes and, you know, I just really love her style. Her, okay, Robin Marie and Ray Missigman are just two people that I just can't get enough of what they do. I love, love, love it. Um, so this is me kind of imitating <laughs> Robin Marie Smith. <laughs> um, and I'm doing it on vinyl. So yeah, I've got some vinyl ATCs available in the Etsy store. These are our fused vinyl. They come in a 10 pack and you get five either white ones or light colored ones and then five darker ones. They don't have the cool patterns on them like the custom keepers do because these are the offcuts and the scraps, you know, leftovers. So they're mostly solids or maybe just a weird pattern here and there. They're not impressive is what I'm trying to say, which means they are perfect for covering up, either collaging or painting. And I'm going to show you how I do that on some of these and in um, this fun style. Okay? You want to see these? See, they're very simple, bright colors, and just a simple doodly something on there. And then I had some sentiments and quotes that I cut out of books and magazines that I added on some of them. And there we go. And these are great. And I think especially if you send these to people because, you know, the fused vinyl is not out there yet. And, and a lot of people still don't know what it is. So when they get it, they're going to be like, oh, what is this? <laughs> this is kind of super cool. <laughs> and, and a word about painting on it. Yes, you can paint on it with acrylic paints. If I sat here and scratched with my fingernail hard enough, yes, I can peel it off. This is PVC vinyl, which is basically a plastic. And you know what happens when you paint on plastic? You can peel it off. But when we fuse the vinyl, it creates a texture. And it creates a variety of different textures. I've counted four so far, and I guess there's four different vinyls. I really don't know what makes them texture differently because before they're fused, they feel the same. But they, they come out with different textures on them. You know, some of them are kind of a, just a, almost a rough bubbly pattern, and then some are almost striated with lines. And then there's a couple of other different ones too. So they have this interesting texture, which I think kind of helps to hold the paint on there. See, just rubbing your fingernail across it, it doesn't come off. But if you dug down and really tried, yes, you can peel it off. But I don't seal mine, because just for regular handling, they're fine. So let me show you how I get this little effect. And if you buy the vinyl, of course, you can do this on cardstock or chipboard or whatever you have. I'm just using vinyl because it's really super cool. <laughs> so you start out, let's start out with um, something that you might get in one of the packs should you choose to pick up a pack. Oh, by the way, they are $2.50 for 10 vinyl ATCs. So, you know, not expensive at all. And shipping's probably another two bucks in the U.S. So, very affordable and fun to play with. Um, in your pack, you're going to receive light ones, dark ones, and maybe some with a little bit of a random pattern. But, you know, like I said, nothing super fun. And what I'm going to do is just use some basic bright colors on here just to, to kind of mimic this um, style that uh, I love so much, and we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know anything about colors and color theory. All I know is that red, yellow, and blue are friends, and you can intermix the three, and you're good. You don't create mud. So basically, that's what I'm going to use. <laughs> and I also know that you can kind of vary the shades of the red, yellow, and green to be more, you know, like pink, 
and then this kind of goldenrod and this light blue. Now I'm using, all the paints I'm using are from DecoArt and this one is called Boysenberry Pink from the Americana line. This is also Americana Bright Yellow and another Americana in Turquoise Blue. So these are the three I'm going to start with. Oh, I also have some DecoArt Americana in Warm White. So let's do four colors because white doesn't really count because, you know, it's white. And what I'm going to do is um, I have my brush ready. <laughs> We're going to finger paint. <laughs> and I'm just going to take, let's just start with the yellow. And I'm going to put just a little blob there. And on the um, vinyl, you might find that some of the smoother ones, you just need a little bit and it, it, you know, it spreads really good. But some of the not so smooth ones, if they have a heavier texture, it kind of falls into the grooves and you need a lot more paint. So you just have to kind of get to know your vinyl, experiment. If you do something you don't like it, you can always just get a, a, a like a paper towel or something, soak it with alcohol, start over. Okay, there's yellow. Clean your brush. <laughs> and let's do what next? Let's do a little bit of blue. Like that. And you don't want this super thick. You know, a little a little variation in thickness is fine. But if it's on there too thick, first of all, it's going to take forever to dry because it, it takes stuff forever to dry on the vinyl anyway. And then it is more likely to be easy to peel if it's really thick. You know? And the more you mess with it and spread it around, the more your colors will blend. And then the, the less you mess with it, you know, just barely kind of touch it around here and there, then they don't blend, get quite as blendy. And I am trying to cover all of the vinyl because I abhor a white space like nature abhors a vacuum. <laughs> But then I'm going to go back in and add some white because see, that way I get the illusion of white space without the anxiety of leaving something white. <laughs> see how that works? <laughs> so now I'll go back in with the white and just add a little drop here and there. And there we go. I don't want it blended too much. Now we have a little white space. <laughs> so that's all there is to paint in those backgrounds. Just, you know, blob three colors that you know get along. And I don't, like I said, I don't know color, but I know red, yellow, blue. I can do that. Or variations thereof. Now you want to set these aside to dry forever. Or you can hit them with your heat gun. Now the vinyl is heat resistant, but not heat proof. You can set fire to it. <laughs> and please don't do that because that's actually very bad. But just for normal, you know, heating it with your heat gun, it'll hold up just fine. Now, I will say it conducts heat like crazy. It will get super hot enough to burn your fingers. So be very careful with it if you are heating it with your heat gun. But yes, you can do that. Just make sure you don't overdo it or, you know, your paint will start to bubble. And I'm going to set these aside because, you know, just like they do on the cooking shows, I've already got some done. <laughs> Next thing I do, this is the uh, doodly part. And you can just go in and make doodle things. I like um, this one a lot. This one you see Robin Marie 
do a lot. And I think she even has a stamp that will do that for you, and which you can certainly do. You can stamp on here, you can stencil on here, or you can just close your eyes and doodle, which I recommend. Okay, the, the right pen for the job is whichever one you can find that will write on acrylic paint without having to press too hard because you don't want the nib to pick up any of the, the dried acrylic residue and then gunk up your nib. And of course the one I really like is the Oto Graphic Liners that will write on absolutely everything. They have a metal sort of roller nib thing, so it's easy to, to wipe off if it picks something up. And they dry permanent. Once they dry, they, like most things, take forever to dry on this vinyl and or on top of the paint that's on the vinyl. So I do hit them with a heat gun, and uh, which helps to heat set them and make sure they're dry, and then they don't smear once they're completely dry. So, I'm going to use this little guy. You can pick these up at Jet Pens, and they're not super expensive, and they're really good. They last a long time, and they'll write on y'all like freaking everything. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> okay, so let's just do, and what I really like about this is you can do this first part in pencil or with like a, a water-soluble graphite or something that, that will come off, because it's sort of your, you know, preliminary sketch, but I just go ahead and use the pen because it just makes more, you know, we like these scribbly mixed media lines, you know, so I just go for it, and then you're just going to make these little humps, however you want, just like that, okay, and here, okay, I really like that one I did that was like the it's sort of like the suggestion of leaves. So, and that's just a little kind of a paisley shaped thing. And this is in my repertoire of the, uh, you know, three or four <laughs> shapes that I can usually draw uh, with some degree of success. So, I'm just going to go for it and pretend like that actually works. Okay, got those two and now I'll do this one. What are we going to do? Let's just do a messy circle like that and, and then we'll just think about that some more. Okay. So we've got these three. Now I want to dry them a little bit. So now I want to go in and I want to kind of um, color in, you know, but I've already got a background on there. So you can go in and brush in some gesso if you want, but I've got this white paint out. So that's what I'm going to use. Just going to kind of put in some white. You can go ahead and go in with whatever color you want to paint them. But since I haven't really planned that far ahead, I'm just going to put some white in there so that I can paint another color inside if I decide I want to do that. And I'm not being perfect. I'm painting over my lines in some places and way inside in others, and it doesn't matter. Okay. Now we're going to let those dry. And I just used a... Um, kind of a pointy brush that I got at Tuesday morning. So I don't even know what it is or what it's for. It's Martha Stewart. There was a set. It was cheap. I bought it. <laughs> That's how that story goes. Okay. Now I'm going to wipe this off on some scrap paper. Clean this up with some scrap paper because we don't want to waste it. We'll make We'll make cool backgrounds. These are some of the backgrounds I've started that were yesterday's wipe off pages. So yeah, coolness on the way there. Rinse my brush and let these dry. Now I can go back in and paint these a color. 
and I've pulled out some colors. I've still got my, my pink, my yellow, and my blue, but I also pulled out a, let's see, these are all DecoArt Americana. This is Desert Turquoise, Teal Mint, Pansy Lavender, and Orange Twist. So, I've got these, and yeah, I may introduce a new color, and that's perfectly fine. I'll show you how to make that work, or at least how I make it work. And I think I'm going to put this, I really love this blue, this uh, desert turquoise. It's gorgeous. We just experienced a rather long, drawn-out blooper right there. <laughs> so I may or may not put that at the end of the video. <laughs> okay, I just... Um, filled this in. Uh, totally lost my train of thought. Alright. <clears throat> and over here, let's do some more other colors. This one, I think I want purple. Pretty. Okay, there's some purple. Pansy purple, no less. Not just any purple. Pansy purple. And then over here. I might do, see this color I'm afraid is going to be too close to what's going on in the background. So I'm going to use this orange. I'm going to have orange leaves because they're not really leaves, right? They're just the suggestion <laughs> of leaves. All right, so now these look <laughs> really kind of <clears throat> kind of sad and not working, right? But they will. Now, if you introduce a new color, it's usually a good idea to put it somewhere else on the page, card, painting, whatever, because I've seen that in video once. <laughs> So, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to kind of smudge or, you know, lightly finger paint some of whatever new color I introduced into the background areas. Just like that. Just a little bit. And that helps it to kind of make more sense. Ooh, these need to dry. <clears throat> All right, now where you go from here is kind of up to you, but I do like to um, continue with the finger painting. So I can add maybe some of our original pink color into this one. Like that. And maybe on this one too. Just ever so lightly. This one, I'm going to put this green Uh, what was that one? The teal mint. Yeah, let's do a little of that in here. Ooh, that really picks up the texture. That looks cool. Okay. 
Okay. And I'm thinking just some little dabs of white here and there. Alrighty. Now, another thing I like to do because, you know, I've seen other people do it, so it must be a thing, is to add a little, um, maybe some neon colors. So I've got, these are the Americana Multi-Surface Neons. I have it in green. These are from DecoArt. Green, yellow, pink, and orange. They ran out of clever color names, I guess. <laughs> so, and the ones I like to pick are usually something really super contrasting. Like on this one, I think I'm seeing the green. So, I'm just gonna put a tiny little dab right there. And then just kinda randomly put it on to kind of give a little a little puppage of color okay this one definitely pink I don't know why definitely pink but I just feel like that's what it needs and I might do oops not so much there There we go. Got some little pink neon happening, and this one, orange. Oh, got it all over me. Do a little bit almost on purpose on the edges and then a little random here and there. Okay, now we'll let those dry. Okay, I think these are dry enough to go on. Another thing I really love about this vinyl, I don't know if you noticed, but okay, these are still wet over here, the ones that we did at the first. They don't buckle at all. Like there's tons of wet paint on here and they lay completely flat because they are completely non-porous, non-absorbent. So I really, really like that. <laughs> you can just do whatever to them and they're great. It's too bad they don't really take watercolor well. I suppose you could put a ground on there of some kind and get them to take watercolor, but yeah. It, Anything wet you put on there, doesn't matter. They won't buckle. Now, I'm going to go back in with my pen again and kind of redefine my lines. And I'm not worried about, like, tracing over the first ones that were there. I'm just adding, adding new ones. Should I scooch in? Probably. Okay.
Okay. And this one. If I get the whole thing in the frame. there we have it. So now our um, we redefined our little drawings and you can continue to doodle more if you want. Let's see for these I've seen this happen. So there we can do that. Um, we could add another little hump in here if we wanted. And for these, we can do this. You can do uh, edges. Amazing pen, huh? Mm -hmm. I'll just do a partial scribble on this one. There you have it. And you can continue to go back in and add little things if you want. Um, you know, maybe some little. That's upside down. Okay, just little doodads like that. This one needs something. This one is the only one that's not making me happy. What does it need? Something in these middles. But what? I think it needs purple. That may not actually be what it needs, but that's what I'm going to try. Let's see. I just go that helped. Now you can take a paint pen and add stuff too. I've got, this is a Nissen Superfine Metal Marker. It's an industrial marker. It's, you know, same as a paint pen, but it's got a little fine uh, tip on it. So that's what I like to use. All right. So 
I'm just gonna do little dots. There we go. Now that one makes me happy. And you can do little dots, you know, randomly anywhere you want. Dots and blobs are always in fashion, right? So, there we have them. Oh, we forgot to add a sentiment. Well, let me use up my uh, leftover paint. Where's my other paint? Okay. Now, a sentiment. I have a, a plate of sentiments right here. Stuff I've cut out of books and magazines and what have you. Okay, honestly, I'm not really a sentiment kind of gal. Not something I use often. So instead of choosing something that goes with the theme or the feel or what I'm trying to journal out, yeah, no. I just usually stick something on there that fits. <laughs> yep, that's how I choose. Okay, here. A dream itself is but a shadow. What does that mean? I don't know. But I'm going to stick it there because look how well it fits. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, rage, rage against the dying of the light. That's a little, <laughs> a little dark. Okay, what else? One of these Winnie the Pooh ones. I love these. You are smarter than you think says Winnie the Pooh. I don't want it to cover my flower. That one may just stay like it is. I guess I can find something really, really short to put there like, believe, create. I'm so tired of this. I'm so tired of them. And it's, there's nothing at all wrong with them, but oh my gosh, they're everywhere on everything. I have put them on everything. And that's probably why I'm tired of them. All right, let's go for this one. What can I put it there? Something kind of long and skinny, but not, see that's too much. That has to do with pets. That's too long. Oh, come on, this is short. Between the conception and the creation, between the emotion and the response falls the shadow. That makes no sense on that flower. Water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. What is this one? My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. Well, that would be better if I had dueled a rainbow. Colors speak all languages. Oh, I like that one. This is from Joseph Addison, but you know what? I'm sorry, I don't have room to give attribution, so <laughs> I'm just going to very messily cut that one off like that. And then glue these on with whatever glue you have handy, which I happen to have matte medium. And it's in this recycled Judikins embossing powder jar because it was the very last in a tall thing of matte medium. And it was, it was hard to get down in there, so I emptied it out and put it in that little jar. So that was just a long explanation for really no reason. dream itself is but a shadow. That sounds Shakespearean. I wonder how to 
Shakespeare book that I was cutting from. Oh, I just bent it. That's okay. And then we decided just to leave that one. Okay, now we can add, um, you know, we can outline that. We can use, I can't find my Stabilo pencils. I have a white one and I have a black one and they are AWOL. I cannot find them anywhere, but I have this uh, Creative Memories pencil that works kind of the same way. So we can do that. We can go around here with our pencil. Or if we want, we can just use our pen. Like so. And then on our pencil, if we want to take a wet brush and smudge it, we can do that. There we go. Three super cute vinyl ATCs. Oh, I want to show you one more thing that's kind of unique to the vinyl. And I really like because one of my early art mentors told me that your project, back then we were just making mostly cards. So your card's not finished until your edges are done and your back is done. And you know, it's really hard to keep the back of anything clean when you're painting. So, you know, a lot of the times what we'll do is just put a blank piece of something on there or even decorate the back, you know, whatever. But with the vinyl, and it kind of depends on the texture. Some of them are harder to clean than others, but you can take some rubbing alcohol. I have 91% and this is just that little handy wipe, baby wipe thing and you can clean off the backs of your um, vinyl cards or ATCs. Just be careful you don't goof up the front. So there we have it. Clean backs and adorable fronts. Okay. That is all I have. I hope you give this a try and then um, join my Facebook group. The link is down below in the somewhere in the video description. And um, you can post pictures there and show me what you've been doing. But for now, I'm done. The end. Oh, I just stuck my hand in the wet ATC. <laughs> Gorgeous turquoise blue. And I think I'm going to use it in here. Like so. Oh. Dear God. Would you just hurry up and get out? What? Just hurry up and get out. Oh, shit, I didn't know you were video. <laughs> Sorry. Clearly. <laughs> Make sure that goes to the blooper reel. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs>